Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and welcome to the next lecture in this fluid dynamics module. And this lecture is all about minor losses. So um, we've been talking a lot in the other lectures leading up to this um, about the pressure drop um, caused in pipes by friction effects. Um, but there are pressure losses that occur in pipe systems due to um, other components. Um, so I'm just going to just pause the video for a minute and just think about what other um, components in a pipe system or pipe network you ha you think there are and, um, that would cause a pressure loss. OK, so hopefully these are some of the others that you thought of. So, you know, there'll be bends in your pipe system. There'll be entrances. So if you have um, the a tank and going into the pipe so that's entering the pipe so that's termed as, a, as an entrance and vice versa an exit is exiting the pipe into a tank so you have pipe exit um, there might be uh, cross-sectional changes so you're going from a larger pipe to a smaller pipe or the other way around junctions um, so y junctions t junctions that sort of thing and um, filters and valves and so on. So all, all of these will also cause a pressure loss um, in your pipe network. And I'm going to show you how to calculate the pressure losses um, from these. And we've already covered how to calculate the pressure loss from frictional effects in different lectures. So I'm going to focus on these, what are called minor losses from the other components. So we showed um, in the previous lectures that using this equation, we can um, calculate the pressure loss um, in a pipe due to frictional effects. And it might have occurred to you or wondered why I'd written it as kind of two um, fractions rather than just kind of one fraction. Well, the reason for this is this is a general form for pressure loss. So the pressure loss is um, equal to some constant um, times the density of the fluid times the velocity of the fluid all um, divided by two. And so, for example, with um, a pipe with friction, that constant is equal to uh, the friction factor times length over the diameter. So when we're looking at other components and we want to find the pressure loss, then we just need to find out the corresponding K for these other minor losses. So the way that we find these is um, a lot of them are just um, basically generally they're found from empirical correlations. So a lot of people have kind of um, done experiments to um, find out what these um, factors are. Well, some of them can be proved um, from theory, but some of them, or perhaps most of them, are found um, just from empirical data. So here's an example of a sharp edge entry. So it's going from a tank in entering the pipe. So the, um, the loss coefficient for this is 0 0.5. And here we have a sharp edged exit where um, the loss factor is 1. And you can see it changes slightly for a well-rounded entry. It's slightly reduced. It's um, 0 0.4, which means it's going to have a smaller pressure loss. But you see it makes no difference on the exit. So depending on what is in your system, you just need to find the corresponding uh, pressure loss coefficient to um, plug into the general formula. And you also need, need to know the velocity in the pipe um, to work out what the, the total, the actual pressure loss for that component will be. Um, some other examples of minor losses, as I said um, in the list, are um, changes in diameter. So here we have a sudden expansion, so going from a smaller diameter to a larger diameter. And this, um, the loss coefficient is given by this function of the area of the ratios, all squared. And just note here, it's the upstream velocity that you need to use. Okay, so the velocity, the faster velocity, because obviously the velocity... Um, would be faster in the smaller pipe than it is in the um, larger dammed pipe due to continuity. Uh, so you use the faster upstream velocity. Where you have a sudden contraction, so going from a larger diameter to a smaller diameter, then it's given by this um, uh, function. So again, the, this um, loss coefficient is a function of the, the ratio of the areas. Um, and note, this is based on the downstream velocity. So again, the fastest um, velocity is the velocity in the, the smaller pipe. For some um, loss coefficients, it um, can be perhaps a little bit more complex, I guess. So if we look at a bend, 
um, either will kind of be given to you or you'll need to find it from some sort of chart. So you can see here that the um, the loss coefficient of this bend depends on a number of things. Um, firstly, the, the how tight the bend is, or that's defined as um, the radius of the bend to the diameter of the pipe, and also on the um, the roughness of the pipe. So you can see here, for example, if this um, in a particular example, if we had a radius to diameter ratio of six and a um, relative roughness of 0 0.001, then what you do is you'd read up here onto this line and then read across and then it would give us the loss coefficient of around, what's that, 0 0.35, something like that, 0 0.32, something like that. <coughs> so it would give us a roughness of about uh, 0.32, something like that. Um, so you can then use that to, to find out the pressure loss in this component. Um, for particularly sharp bends, um, it, and you want to reduce the pressure loss, then you can use guide vanes to help reduce um, the value of the, the loss coefficient. Valves are another um, source of pressure loss. In fact, these cause, because of their design, cause significant pressure losses because of the way, because um, you're trying to respect, restrict the um uh um kind of the 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 flow that's going through so um or basically to create a pressure drop so and that pressure drop kind of depends on how open the the valve is so if it's fully open then it'll be much lower and here's some typical values for for a valve and then you can see as the value the valve is being shut down three quarters half and a quarter open loss coefficient is um, increasing as it does. So just consider this um, pipe system shown here in this diagram. So water is flowing from tank A into tank B and it needs to come over, overcome all the total the total pressure loss between the two tanks. So um, what is that total pressure loss? We need to, to work that out. We need to sum the individual pressure loss associated with each um, element. So how many pressure loss elements are there? Just pause the video and um, count them up and um, see if you're right. So um, let's go through the, the pressure loss elements that there are. Hopefully you got these. So firstly, there's the entry loss. So we're entering the pipes. So there's a loss associated with that. There's also a loss associated with the, the pipe bend, the valve, the sudden um, expansion and then also the exit loss into the tank but also on top of that these are the the minor losses but we also have the pipe friction so we have to do that separately for um, obviously different velocities so for the um, small smaller diameter pipe and the friction in the larger diameter pipe so this is it kind of um, written out in fuel uh, in, in written out in full so the total pressure loss in the system is the pressure loss associated with the exit, the bend, the valve, the friction in the small pipe and the expansion. And you'll see why I bracketed that in a minute. And the friction in large pipe and the exit loss. And this is because when you, if you remember the general formula, so the generic formula for each pipe. And what I mean by each pipe is if there's a change in diameter or a change in material, then you need to consider each section of the pipe as a separate pipe and then add all the sections together and the reason for that is because the velocity um you know or pipe roughness might will change if you change the material or diameter because because of continuity the velocity in the smaller pipe is going to be larger than the velocity in the larger diameter pipe therefore you can't use um this velocity when you're working out the exit loss here for example okay so you have to use um and the, you know the velocity, the corresponding correct um, velocity. So this is a generic formula. So therefore, for our system, the total pressure loss is the friction in the small pipe plus the sum of the minor losses, which is the exit, the bend, the valve, and also the expansion. Because just remember, we're using the fastest velocity, therefore the upstream velocity, all times by the density and the velocity in the smaller diameter pipe plus the friction in the um, 
larger damage pipe plus the sum of the minor losses of which there is actually only one it's the exit loss all times by the density and the velocity squared in the larger damage pipe so you just need to be aware that um, you know you use the correct velocity um, for each pipe and as I say if there's a change in material or a change in um, diameter then you need to split your network up into different sections and add all those sections together so just to, um, a few things just to remember in losses is kind of talking about going through that. Um, with um, pipe constrictions or expansions where there's a sudden change diameter, the loss is associated with the velocity in the faster flow pipe. OK, not both. You don't want to double account for um, the loss. OK, so just take it as the upstream or downstream, depending on which is the faster velocity. And in networks which have different geometries, materials, then pressure loss must be determined for each section and then added together or summed to give you the total pressure loss.